Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, this is At The Helm Sports. I'm your host, Derek Helm. Thank you for joining me for episode 115. Please be sure to follow, subscribe on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Leave those five-star reviews. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that like button. And in the comment section, tell me what your favorite Super Bowl of all time was. Could be one where maybe your favorite team won. Maybe just one where you hit a huge bet or just one you really enjoyed. So leave that down in the comments. Speaking of the Super Bowl, going to be diving into Super Bowl 58. We have everything you need for the big game here. Basically going to be breaking down all the bets that I've made so far. Going to hop into DraftKings, go down the showdown lineups, and and basically who I like at captain over there and some strategies. But first, kind of been listening to a bunch of podcasts and, and heard them discussing, you know, what's the first Super Bowl that you ever remember? And actually, you know, Super Bowl is, is huge. And in my family, it's basically we have Christmas, St. Patrick's Day, because we're Irish, obviously, and the Super Bowl. So every year we have a huge party. So I remember tons of, of just Super Bowl parties, basically back when I was a kid and, and growing up. Really, if I go through every Super Bowl, I can probably remember where I was for almost every single one of them. But the one that sticks out for me of probably the first, maybe not the first that I actually watched, but first that I remember the most of and being the most engaged was back in... I think it was Super Bowl 25. It was the Bills versus the Giants. Now, obviously, being from New York, a lot of family members are Giants fans. Unfortunately, I'm a Jet fan. Never got to experience the Super Bowl. But anyways, that Super Bowl, I remember sitting on my dad's lap, and he he asked me, he was like, what do you think? You're gonna, are they going to make the kick? And I was like, no, he's going to miss it. And sure enough, Bills missed the field goal. Giants win the Super Bowl. Everybody was happy. I, I remember that one vividly, and it, it's just basically been – Every single year that that's basically the way it is, is a bunch of family, a bunch of friends getting together and having a great time. So I don't think it'll be any different this year, having a big party again. And I'm sure you guys are, too. So if we dive into it, basically, I mean, really, Super Bowl 58 is is probably one of the harder ones that I've had recently of of what I really think is going to happen. I keep going back and forth. I mean, just this Chiefs team doesn't really seem like they're the Chiefs of the past. I've said it earlier on this podcast. I kind of compared them to the early Brady years with the Patriots, where it's almost more the defense is carrying them. And then obviously you have such a good quarterback that that he can win games as well. But that's kind of the way that the, the Chiefs just went through the AFC, you know, put, playing hard-nosed football, running the ball, and playing good defense. And Mahomes just does enough to help them win. So you got the Taylor Swift narrative and, and just, you know, obviously the NFL wanted her to be part of, of the Super Bowl. There, there's no doubt about that. Now, whether or not they could do anything about it, I don't know about that. There really didn't seem to be too much sketchy shit going on up to this point, but I could definitely see it being a big deal in this game. You know, if it's close down the stretch, we saw it last year. There was, there was a bullshit pass interference penalty at the end that that helped the Chiefs win. Now, granted, it wasn't the only reason the Chiefs won, but it, I do think if it gets close, we could see some sketchy calls. We've seen it in the past already. And if you're the NFL, you have gained so much revenue, so many fans just throughout these playoffs just because of Taylor Swift. All these people are going to be tuning into their first Super Bowl because of Taylor Swift, because of Travis Kelsey, Kelsey hoping that the Chiefs win and and just you can't let them down and have the Chiefs lose because then you're going to lose all those fans. So I do think that the Niners have to come out here and they they have to beat the Chiefs pretty pretty handedly because if it's close at the end, I could see some fuckery going on. So I know that's a little bit narrative driven and and not really the greatest analysis. But I could see it happening. Now, with that being said, I do think this Niners team matches up pretty well, even though they haven't looked great throughout the playoffs. I I do think offensively they can give the Chiefs problems compared to what they've seen up to this point. So I keep going back and forth, like I said. But the the big thing is going to be, obviously, Andy Reid versus Shanahan. You know, two good coaches, two great coaches probably in the NFL, but I do think Andy Reid is is a step above. You know, we we see his record. I think it's something like thirty one and three when he has two weeks to prepare. So 
he's had plenty of time to prepare. I'm sure they're going to have a great game plan coming out. And we've seen the Niners get off to a slow start throughout the playoffs, but maybe they can come out of the gates hot and, and, and score against the Chiefs and put the pressure on them. But the big thing with Shanahan that we've seen throughout his career is, is just late in these big games, just faltering and, and really making poor decisions at, from an offensive standpoint. He was part of that Falcons team when they blew that huge lead to the Patriots. So, you know, obviously they had the huge lead going into the second half and the guy runs the ball like five times throughout the whole second half. So that didn't really make sense. And then rewind to this exact matchup a couple of years ago. You know, you have Jim, Jimmy Garoppolo stepping back and throwing the ball a, a bunch. Now they did give the ball to Mostert quite a bit in that game, but they ended up blowing that one too down the stretch. So it's going to be interesting to see if in the second half, who who can make the adjustments and if Shanahan can step up in a big spot. So that, that that's a huge narrative in this game. And then obviously you have Mahomes versus Purdy. There really is no comparison, but throughout the playoffs, Purdy has actually been the better quarterback. So it's going to be interesting. I, I'm a little bit worried that it might be too big of a spot for him, but He's played good games with with this receiving core. I don't think that Shanahan is going to put it all on on his shoulders. I think they're going to have a good game plan to get the ball out quickly, get these receivers in space. So it's going to be interesting. But as far as Mahomes versus Purdy goes for the playoffs, I, I mean, Purdy's actually been better. You know, he, he's taken some chances and, and maybe had some fluky plays, especially that last one in the NFC Championship. But Throughout the playoffs, yards per game, Mahomes is at 239, Purdy's at 259 yards per game. So he's beaten him in yards. Now, completion percentage, Mahomes is definitely higher, 68%. Purdy, 61.4%, so still not terrible for Purdy. Mahomes has thrown a little bit more touchdowns. Now, this is a per-game basis, obviously, because Mahomes has one more game in the playoffs than Purdy did, but Mahomes is 1.3 touchdowns per game, Purdy won. And one of the big knocks I've heard on Purdy is just, you know, he's got these receivers and it's all the receivers and he just dunks it off to them and everything is yards after the catch. That actually hasn't really been the case throughout the season. He he had a very high air yards per attempt and throughout the playoffs so far, air yards per game, Mahomes is at 210, Purdy at 248 air yards per game. So he is airing it out. He's throwing the ball down the field. Now, obviously, it's much easier to throw the ball down the field when you have talented receivers. But I, I don't think people are giving Purdy enough credit for how well he's played. And, and I do think he's a good quarterback. Now, do I think that he is a franchise quarterback, perennial MVP candidate? I don't know about that. But if I'm a 49er fan, I don't care about that at all. All I care about is, can he win me a Super Bowl? And in a couple days, I think the answer could be yes. So I, I do think Purdy, as long as he can limit the mistakes and Shanahan comes up with a good game plan, I, I think that he can get it done. Now, obviously, with that being said, we're not comparing Mahomes to Purdy at all. It, it's Patrick Mahomes. And the fact that you have that man on your team obviously gives you a huge leg up. But if we break down some of the bets that I've made so far this year, Usually I, I go pretty crazy on the Super Bowl. As I said, it, it's it's just, it's like Christmas. You know, I, I, I just, I love it. I, I love every aspect of it. Generally betting the coin toss, which by the way, if you are doing, make sure your site offers even money. You're not betting a 50-50 coin flip at negative 110 or minus 105. It's just, it's 50-50 are the chances. Make sure you're getting even money on it. And Tails never fails, so keep that in mind as well. But, you know, betting the national anthem, how long it's going to go. Betting the Gatorade color, all that fun stuff. It, it, it's fun, but so far to this point, haven't really done any of that. Kept it football. But first one I made, I, I actually gave out on the intro video of, of, of this podcast. Mahomes over 25 and a half rushing yards. And I, I do like that quite a bit. And actually, after I made the wager, I, I heard a stat that he actually runs significantly more when he's facing a four-man rush compared to a blitz. And the 49ers actually blitz at a much lower rate as far as the NFL goes. So I do think that that helps out quite a bit. And Mahomes is going to take off quite a bit. 
So 25 and a half rushing yards for him. I love that. Speaking of rushing yards, they've relied heavily on Pacheco throughout the playoffs. Now, McKinnon could possibly return here. Probably unlikely. Clyde Edwards-Hilaire dealing with an illness, and they really haven't really relied on him very much at all. So I, I do like Pacheco over 66 and a half rushing yards. That's at minus 110. So I, I do like that quite a bit. I think they do rely on him. Obviously, the Niners have been gouged throughout the, the playoffs. Aaron Jones ran all over them. Montgomery looked good. Gibbs looked good. So I, I do like Pacheco there. As far as first touchdowns go, I got Debo at plus 950. And then on the other side, I went Kelsey plus 800. So just little sprinkles on those. You know, if one of those hit, it's a, it's a nice little hit. I do also like Purdy under 30 and a half pass attempts. Basically hasn't really hit that number very often over his past several games, but I do think that they come out here and they hand the ball to, to McCaffrey quite a bit. I, I think that that's probably what you want to do, especially out of the gate is just see if you can get McCaffrey going limit the mistakes that Purdy can make. And I do think this will be a little bit slower paced of a game. As I said, I like Pacheco's rushing yards. I like Mahomes to run the ball a little bit. When you're running the ball a lot, the clock is running. So I do think that it, it shortens the game a little bit. Possibly maybe that leans towards the under. I kind of want to see what that number comes in at on Sunday and if it's worth betting. But I, I do think that Purdy under 30 and a half pass attempts definitely makes some sense there. So I took that. And as I said, if I think that that's going to be the case and they're going to run McCaffrey more, got McCaffrey at over 89 and a half rushing yards. And I think that's a good number. The guy can easily run for over 100. He's an absolute freak. So I, I, I like McCaffrey over 89 and a half rushing yards. And then the last one I have is a FanDuel posted player matchups. So basically this is a receiving yards matchup and it's Debo versus Ayuk. And Debo was actually getting three and a half yards. So that's at minus 110. I, I like Debo there. I do think that Sneed probably will be focused on Ayuk. And he has absolutely shut down wide receiver ones all season long. I do think that they move Debo around a little bit more. And obviously, he could play out of the slot. They could hit him with those quick slants, swing passes. And we saw in the AFC Championship, Zay Flowers was just destroying this Kansas city defense and, and run after the catch is, is was huge for him. And obviously that that's most of Debo's game. So I, I love Debo in this game. I've also made an MVP wager, got it at 32 to one, but that's no longer available. So, you know, if, if you want to get in on that, it's probably somewhere around 20 now, I think. And then just because of the, the narrative, the Taylor Swift narrative, obviously the fan vote is 20% and, Kelsey's probably going to get that 20% pretty easily. Obviously, in most years, it's kind of hard for Mahomes not to be the MVP. But if he only throws one touchdown and Kelsey does have a big game and that touchdown does go to Kelsey, I could definitely see Kelsey being the MVP. So I took him at 14-1. to one. Have seen it also at 17-1. to one. So if you wanted to get on, in on that, I, I think that makes some sense. And obviously, I have the first touchdowns with Debo and, and Kelsey. If that happens right off the bat, Obviously, that opens the chance for them possibly scoring two touchdowns, which would definitely open up their chances of MVP even wider. So that's what I'm looking at as far as wagers go. As far as actually betting the spread or money line, like I said, I'm still wavering back and forth. I don't know what I really want to do. It's very odd to me that all the money is coming in on Kansas City and even more so just on the money line, not even the spread. I think it's somewhere around 75% of the money is, is coming in on Kansas City, and this line hasn't moved at all. It's very odd that Vegas and, and these books would put themselves in a position where, where they could lose money that much. So obviously, it, it's the Super Bowl. This is going to be a very sharp line. They've been very sharp throughout the playoffs. So the fact that they're not changing this at all is – is a little sketchy to me because I kind of lean the Chiefs for what I said earlier is just I do think Andy Reid and Mahomes make a huge difference, and if it gets close, maybe they get a couple calls go their way. But the fact that this line is not moving is – it's definitely something to keep in mind. So just heading into Sunday, you know, maybe some of the big whales haven't gotten in there and, and changed the line all that much. 
But just something to keep in mind. As of right now, I'm actually kind of leaning towards the Niners doing the opposite of what they've done throughout the playoffs, coming out and actually having a good first half. So I'm thinking about possibly Niners first half, but Chiefs to win. It's a possibility. Not an official bet yet, but just something I'm thinking. Now, if we jump into DraftKings, I do think that if you're playing Showdown, there's obviously a a ton of options here. I am a complete degenerate, so obviously I'm going to be playing a ton of lineups. There are a lot of options at Captain, but really I, I don't know if I'm going to spread myself too thin. If you've never played showdown captain mode, basically you choose a player as your captain. They are one and a half times what their salary would be at the flex position. And as, as the captain, they're one and a half the salary, but they also accumulate one and a half times the points. So it's pretty important who you choose in your captain, because it can make a huge difference at the end of the game. Obviously a one game sample size, the margin of winning is, is very, very slim. So definitely take some strategy. When you're building your lineups, what you want to do is just build it to a story. So if you think, as I said, this is going to be a slower pace game, they're going to run McCaffrey, they're going to run Pacheco, maybe it's field goals and a lower scoring game, then you could go that route. You can go McCaffrey in the captain spot. You could play Pacheco, maybe play one of the defenses in a kicker and and find a a wide receiver or something maybe there. If you think this is going to be an absolute shootout, maybe you put Mahomes at at the captain or maybe one of the receivers at captain and, and just stack it up that way. Now, if you do think that maybe Kansas City just rolls here and and the 49ers just can't keep up. Maybe they come out slow like they have been in the playoffs and just never get it going. Then you can do an onslaught and you can go with five Chiefs and only bring it back with with one Niner. So just some things to keep in mind there if you've never played before. Now, obviously, if you have, you know what you're doing anyway. But what I'm looking at here is I, I definitely like, obviously, McCaffrey is going to be the most popular captain. He's going to be the most popular play. He's also the most expensive. $18,000 at at captain is pretty expensive. But my favorite is Debo. As I said, I I do think that he can take advantage of this Kansas City defense. I think that they're going to have plenty of plays to get the ball in his hands. And he is much cheaper. Only $13,800 at the captain spot, $9,200 at flex. So I, I do like Debo there in the captain spot. I will sprinkle in a little bit of Kelsey. 15300 is a pretty good price for him at captain. As I said, I think Pacheco runs the ball a lot, so him at captain is at 12000 is interesting. And then because it's Patrick Mahomes, got to play a couple lineups with Mahomes at captain, but I don't really like him as much in this game. The Niners' defense hasn't been incredible throughout the playoffs, but... I do think they're a little more susceptible on the ground. And and as I said, I could see this being a little bit slower paced game. So I think Mahomes is going to be pretty, pretty popular, pretty highly owned here. So at the captain spot, I'm, I'm fine going elsewhere. I might sprinkle him in a couple. And then one of my dark horse captains, I I do like actually George Kittle. No, he's dealing with a toe injury, but I think he's going to be fine. He'll probably end up going $9,600 for him is, is a great price you get a lot of savings and you can fit a lot of these other guys in here. So I, I, I do like Kittle as a sneaky play. As I said, you know, I think Sneed's going to be on Ayuk, So maybe that limits him a little bit. And if Debo isn't the one to get going, Kittle we've seen have explosion games and he's great after the catch as well. So I, I could definitely see that happening. So that's really what I'm looking at, at captain. As far as building out the rest of the lineup, Obviously, you you could throw Purdy in there, especially if you want to play a, a Debo or a Kittle. And I, I'm not saying that I'm not going to play Ayuk at all. I, I absolutely will have him in lineups. I do think that he is a great player, and and maybe Snead isn't on him the entire time, and and he can definitely get there. But overall, it's probably going to be a lot of Kelsey, Debo, Pacheco, McCaffrey that I'm, I'm leaning into. Now, I, I saw Rashi Rice has been a full practice all of a sudden dealing with 
multiple ankle injuries. So that's concerning only a couple days out. Maybe it's just cautionary, but when you see ankle injuries, that that's a little bit sketchy. So definitely want to keep an eye on that because uh, up until I saw that, I, I thought he could be a, a pretty good piece. I do think he will be a little bit popular just because that Kansas city receiving core is just gross. So he he's one of the more sure ones in there. But speaking of that Kansas city receiving core, it could be one of them that, that you absolutely need in this game. And, and it's going to be really hard to choose which one it is. So like I said, I'm playing a lot of lineups, so I will sprinkle a lot of them in. I do think Marquez Valdez Scantling is, is a great play there. Only $3,000 doesn't really get heavily involved, but does tend to get deep targets. So if you can get a deep one, especially if it's a touchdown, that, that could absolutely pay off. Juwan Jennings at 4,000 for, for the, 49ers I've heard talked up a little bit I'm not really crazy about it he hasn't been heavily involved the snaps are coming down Connolly's actually been playing a little bit more than him so I'm not crazy about him but from a cheap standpoint I, I do like Valdez Scantling I think Elijah Mitchell actually could be a sneaky play $2,800 for him isn't bad maybe McCaffrey gets banged up or like we saw he had a, the long run got tackled inside the five Eli could come in and, and get a, a touchdown. So I, I do like him of the dusty Kansas city wide receivers, maybe Justin Watson. He's shown a little bit of flashes this year. Sky Moore could be back, but I'm not crazy about him. Nicole Hardman, just after what we saw with that fumble against the bills. I, I don't, I don't know that he gets involved. Kadarius Tony's going to be back. There's just so many of these guys. So I'm going to wait to Sunday to see. I don't know if all these guys are going to be active. So definitely want to keep an eye on that. I, I might take a chance on Kadarius Tony, you know, limited touches last year in the Super Bowl, And obviously he ended up getting there. He was just outside of the optimal lineup. So I, I think maybe I could take a, a chance there. But I definitely like Noah Gray. I, I think he might be popular. They've been going a lot of 12 personnel, two tight end sets. So Noah Gray at 1,800 is a great salary saver and actually has been involved quite a bit. So he's definitely going to be in the player pool quite a bit. Kyle Juszczyk every once in a while comes up and, and scores a touchdown or catches a pass. So at only $800, I think he's in play. And then just one other guy to keep in mind is, is Richie James. Now, if all these guys are active, it's probably not going to be a lot of playing time for him, but he's also the punt returner, kick returner. So if he gets a return, you know, maybe that makes sense. Maybe you double dip and, and play the Kansas City defense. Probably a long shot, but it's a possibility. And he's good with the ball in his hands. So if they can get the ball in space, maybe he can do something. And, and at only $400, it's, it's worth a stab. And if McKinnon does come back which like i said seems unlikely he's only 200 dollars, so i i do like that quite a bit but that's really what we're looking at from a showdown standpoint and just excited for this game in general you know obviously from a betting standpoint it's one of the best days of the year also have bets on the waste management which is one of the best pregames. so watching that going forward actually it's funny leading up to the Super Bowl, I think it was 2020 and 2021, I had Webb Simpson at the Waste Management and hit him as a winner. And then I think that was the year Mahomes first touchdown at 17 to 1. So that was an incredible Sunday. Just instantly, Webb Simpson wins, huge day, awesome, that's great. Mahomes first touchdown, bam, all the money. Then the following year was Brooks Kepka, who I bet he won the Waste Management. And then it was Rob Gronkowski first touchdown. So maybe we can do that again this year. Hit a winner at the waste management, hit a first touchdown, win all the money. Who knows? But that's probably going to do it for this week. I do kind of want to put out a couple more bets in there. So if you are in the Mad Lab MMA Discord, I will definitely be posting all my wagers there. If you are not in there, head over to themadlabmma.com, sign up. Obviously, Mad Lab is the best in the industry when it comes to MMA. We have every sport covered over there. As soon as I make any of my golf wagers and any of my NFL wagers, they are posted into the Discord over there and then posted on the site. So definitely head over there. Check that out. 
Check out thehelmsports.com. We'll have all my write-ups all PGA Tour season long. And you can check me out on Twitter at The Helm Sports. And you can also subscribe to the Substack down in the description. But that's going to do it for me. I'm your host, Derek Helm. Thank you. And remember, Stefan out there. <laughs>